With the recent releasal of Chapter 10 of Two Blue Vortex, a lot was revealed to us readers. Sarada has the reaction time to dodge a point blank Chidori from somebody who popped up behind her and surprise attacked her. Himawari might have some kind of renewable and reusable Baryon mode because of how much affinity her chakra has with Karamas, and Boruto not only can't use his Karma Mark, but has to put a lot of active effort into reeling his Karma Mark back in if it even halfway activates. But the unfortunate thing about Chapter 10 is that it wasn't 80 pages long. See, because Chapter 9 and Chapter 8 set up a whole lot of questions that need to be answered. We needed to understand why Boruto wasn't able to use his Karma Marking when he was able to use it three years ago and is able to use it in his battle against Kawaki. We need to know why Jura was flying over to Himawari after sensing Kurama's chakra signature, and we needed to understand why Kashin Koji and Boruto were using some kind of snake cave as a hideout. And while one of these questions, why Jura went to Himawari when sensing Kurama's chakra, was answered, those other two absolutely weren't. Now, it's not to say that these two questions will never be answered, but it will be at least another month until they are. That is, if you're looking for the answers amongst the manga. But after having a couple of months to sit on this information, and with the new added information of Chapter 10, I believe I not only have an answer for why Boruto's karma marking might be acting up, but also for why Boruto and Kashin Koji appear to be in snake caves. And as with all things in Naruto, and now apparently Boruto, it all comes back to Orochimaru. But the idea of everything coming back to Orochimaru may not be only specific to the Naruto timeline. That is to say that there's a theory out there that states that Orochimaru has been around a whole lot longer than just Naruto. But rather instead, Orochimaru, or the concept of Orochimaru, has been around for thousands of years. But how? How would Orochimaru have been around for thousands of years? We saw Orochimaru as a child being raised in Konoha by Hiruzen. And yes, Yes, we did, but Orochimaru's past has always been suspect. The question of why Orochimaru was a snake has never been answered. Their true form is that of a great white snake that's able to travel between bodies. They basically reverse engineered the common marking in the form of a cursed seal. And oh yeah, they might be immortal now. Tie all that into their never-ending pursuit of all ninjutsu, genjutsu, shinjutsu knowledge, and the longer we dig into Orochimaru's past, the more suspect it becomes. Especially when you consider the fact that Orochimaru now may play an active role in Boruto's life. But why? Why would Orochimaru risk their status as a Konoha-supported scientist to help Boruto? Is it because Sasuke told them to? Is it because they want to study Kashin Koji's body to see how you create the perfect clone? Is it because Orochimaru wouldn't care about Naruto's death? Is it because Orochimaru was able to snap out of omnipotence like Amado and Shikamaru? Or is it possibly because Orochimaru was never affected by omnipotence on account of being in Otsutsuki? Well, in actuality, today we're going to be talking about how it might be all of those things. Because an answer revolving around Orochimaru has to be as complicated as the character itself. Which means we got a whole lot to talk about today. So with no further ado, let's get into... Orochimaru's master plan revealed. But before we get into anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you love the idea of me breaking down theories from your other favorite anime and manga, go ahead and follow my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Porto, I talk all other anime and manga. And if you just love the idea of me talking anime and manga, go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Itaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. But before we get into all that, today we gotta talk about a brand new sponsor to the page... Gentle Bands. Gentle Bands is trying to reimagine what wedding bands can look like for you. See, for too long, men have been stuck with boring wedding bands, but Gentle Bands wants to change that. They want to give you a wedding band as interesting and as unique as you are. Like, for example, the two wedding bands that I got from them. The intention and the impact. See, these tungsten wedding bands are sturdy, so they'll last you, hopefully, longer than your marriage. On top of that, highlights running through the band like Meteorite or Dinosaur Fossil can act as unique ways to make this wedding band as you as possible. Listen, there's sometimes situations where wearing a ring is just downright inconvenient. And that's where Gentle Band's chains come into play. And that way, even when you can't wear a ring for some reason like work, you can still keep this incredible symbol of commitment and love close to you. On top of that, all of the rings come in this awesome, sleek, and sturdy package that comes along with a certificate of craftsmanship. And on top of that, any ring purchased from Gentle Bands also comes along with free engravings. So what are you guys waiting for? Get 25% off your order of Gentle Bands today by either following the link in my description or using code NCHAMMER at checkout. If you're going to be wearing a ring for the rest of your life, you might as well make it one you love. So 
Orochimaru, continuing to be one of the biggest question marks in the entirety of the Naruto universe. A character we believed was gone from the story, relatively. Like, sure, of course, we saw a little bit of Orochimaru in the beginning of Boruto as they were creating Mitsuki and trying to turn him into a snake's age. But outside of that, Orochimaru has appeared to remain in their laboratory, which is state-sponsored, finally. But even that raised a bunch of eyebrows, not only amongst readers, but also amongst people in the universe. As Naruto fully acknowledged the fact that the concept of Mitsuki had to remain a secret from the public. Because Naruto is sponsoring Orochimaru's scientific advancements, which are just human cloning. And while the concept of human cloning is ethically a gray area, when the human cloning experiments are being run by somebody with a notorious track record of, of, I don't know, killing children, that moral grayness starts to slip a little into the black a little bit. And yet, at least in manga canon, that's pretty much the last we heard of Orochimaru, even though they're objectively doing something very interesting. However, with the release of Chapter 9, Orochimaru's return might have been foreshadowed, as Boruto, after he was done messing around in Konoha, decided to teleport back to his and Kashin Koji's base, which appeared to be in a snake cave of some sorts. A long underground cave that appeared to have scales on the walls and floors, and was lit by snake-formed lamps, an architectural design as unique as the person who's designing it. And the only person who lights up their underground caves with snakes coming out of the walls with lights in their mouths is Orochimaru. Now this led the fandom to two possible conclusions. Either Orochimaru is working with Boruto and Kashin Koji, or Boruto and Kashin Koji are using the network of abandoned caves that Orochimaru left behind as Jiraiya chased him across the country, which Kashin Koji would possibly know the location of on account of the fact that he is Jiraiya's clone. Now, if Boruto and Kashin Koji are just using an abandoned cave as a nice little snuggly hideout, then the entirety of this video goes up into smoke. However, the idea of Kashin Koji and Boruto just using abandoned Orochimaru caves is not all that compelling, and Kishimoto for the last year or so has been going for as compelling as possible. On top of that, while there has been a fair amount of twists and turns that have been unexpected, usually when a hint is dropped that leads the majority of the fandom to believe in one thing, that one thing usually ends up happening. The most recent example of this being Himawari becoming Kurama's Jinchuriki because of her genetic lineage to Kurama, something that I've been talking talking about for years. And thus, if we do move forward with the assumption that Boruto and Kashin Koji are working with Orochimaru, that brings us to the question of why? Why would Orochimaru bring Boruto and Kashin Koji into their fold when that would put them at risk of losing their state sponsorship? Well, there's a lot of possible ways to answer that question, some of which we've already covered, but now that I've consumed chapter 10 and seen how much Boruto is truly struggling with his karma marking, a couple of new possibilities have arose. And these possibilities tie all the way back to the likes of Kimimaru, but they might tie back to even before that. But see, I believe it's a possibility through the reveal of the snake cave that Kishimoto is cooking up one of the biggest reveals we we've seen yet in Boruto, and yes, I'm aware, we literally just got it revealed that Himawari might have a Baryon mode. Because there's a definitive possibility, based off the information we have thus far in Two Blue Vortex, that Orochimaru is tied to Shibai, and Orochimaru has had their fingers in way more than just Konoha's history. But in order to cover this grand, sprawling theory about Orochimaru's lifespan spanning thousands of years and him manipulating the entirety of the Naruto timeline, we have to first go over a couple of the more logical, sensical, and less flamboyant reasons that Orochimaru would possibly be helping Boruto. So let's circle back to the reasons that we've already highlighted and answer the basic question of why is Orochimaru helping Boruto? Thus far on this page and in this video, we've identified that there's a myriad of different reasons that Orochimaru would help Boruto. The first of which, and possibly the most logical of which, is the fact that Sasuke asked. See, as we've already covered multiple times on this page, Boruto is supposed to be an amalgamation of all the best parts of Itachi, Sasuke, and Naruto. And thus when Boruto became a rogue ninja, it would make sense that Sasuke, who became a rogue ninja right alongside him, would begin to look for allies. This is relatively obvious because even though Sasuke was wrapped up in a tree one year into the time skip, Boruto is now with Kashin Koji, which means either the two of them searched for Kashin Koji or Kashin Koji found them. Regardless, allies were being garnered. And when you go all the way back in time to when Sasuke became a rogue ninja for the first time, the reason he became a rogue ninja was involvement with Orochimaru. And while Sasuke and Orochimaru's relationship was a bit tumultuous at times, by the time that the fourth great shinobi world war comes around, Sasuke and Orochimaru are once again allies. 
because while Sasuke was the person who killed Orochimaru, he's also the person who brought them back. And therefore, basically the entire reason that Orochimaru was ever brought back into the fold of Konoha in the first place. As without Sasuke facilitating Orochimaru's revival, Orochimaru wouldn't have been able to bring the four Kage back to life. But Orochimaru being state-sponsored by Konoha doesn't necessarily mean that they hold any amount of allegiance to Konoha. See, it really doesn't appear as though any of the scientific breakthroughs that Orochimaru is making down in that laboratory are necessarily being shared with Konoha. Well, yes, you can absolutely say, oh, but Mitsuki is a shinobi for Konoha. I seriously doubt Orochimaru is sending Mitsuki into Konoha to be a shinobi for Konoha's sake. It seems more of a logical move by Orochimaru to see what this man-made clone is able to accomplish when put into a circumstance that is meant to foster talent and strength. It's more like stage three or the unofficial stage four of a clinical trial. Orochimaru is essentially saying, I made this drug. I know this drug works. Let's put it out into the public and see what it does. But the distrust from Orochimaru towards Konoha is not one-sided. Let's not forget the fact that Orochimaru is constrained to their laboratory and under constant observation by the likes of Yamato or other Joni. And thus, while Konoha and Orochimaru have joined in a mutually beneficial relationship, it's not like either of them is stoked to be with each other. Orochimaru simply understands not running from Konoha makes it a whole lot easier to crack scientific codes, while Konoha understands as long as they can keep Orochimaru under their wing, they'll probably stop killing children. Naturally, born children at least. And thus, if Sasuke went to Orochimaru and said, hey, uh, kind of need help, there's really no reason for us to believe that Orochimaru wouldn't help. But there's more to it than that. Sasuke might not have even been the person who actually brought Boruto to Orochimaru. I mean, after all, we peeped into the time skip when Boruto and Sasuke were still together and they were hanging out in snake caves. Now, we've only ever seen that from the likes of Boruto and Kashin Koji. So if loyalty and friendship with Sasuke isn't the reason that Boruto ended up with Orochimaru, then how is Kashin Koji the reason that Boruto could end up with Orochimaru? Well, the simple answer is intrigue. Kashin Koji is essentially exactly what Orochimaru has been trying to accomplish with Mitsuki, and therefore is, in essence, a Mitsuki, a clone of somebody incredibly powerful that's able to accomplish perfect sage mode. And thus, if Kashin Koji, with Jiraiya's memories and his current understanding of Konoha politics, was able to come to the conclusion that Orochimaru would be a potential ally on account of the fact that Orochimaru holds no loyalty towards Konoha, Kashin Koji waltzing into Orochimaru's cave and saying, hey, I'm Jiraiya's clone and also I'm a perfect sage, would be enough intrigue on Orochimaru's part to absolutely take both Kashin Koji and Boruto under their wing. See, because by observing Kashin Koji's body, Orochimaru would be able to essentially reverse engineer how Amado created Kashin Koji, which would give Orochimaru possible better solutions to implement into their own cloning process. Because while you can sit here and say, oh, but Mitsuki is a marvel and Mitsuki is perfect, Mitsuki doesn't need updating, we're not talking about Mitsuki here. See, it's already been established through Mitsuki's backstory that Orochimaru and Log had to struggle rather mightily to get Mitsuki to evolve into a snake sage, as they had to run Mitsuki through a trial that wiped his memory several dozen times to try and get Mitsuki to evolve into a snake sage. And all in all, this is an incredibly inefficient process. But then again, so is Orochimaru's cloning program. Because every single time we've ever popped down to Orochimaru's lab, we've seen that Mitsuki is by far and away not the only clone of Orochimaru. I mean, obviously, Log exists, but there's also tons of other Mitsukis in giant test tubes. And thus, if Orochimaru was able to get information from from Kashin Koji's anatomy, that would serve as plenty of reason to take Boruto and Kashin Koji under their wing. But trying to get clues behind how Kashin Koji was made and therefore how Amado went about cloning people isn't the only bit of information that Orochimaru would be able to glean from Kashin Koji and Boruto. See, because what is Orochimaru's key motivating factor in basically the entirety of Naruto? The discovery of all jutsu, the unlocking of all knowledge. Now, while some people will make the argument that Orochimaru cracked the code on all jutsu when they were placed in Infinite Tsukiyomi, because Infinite Tsukiyomi gives you your own personal version of heaven, and Orochimaru was very much hit by it, and therefore Orochimaru in his own Infinite Tsukiyomi dream found the code to all jutsu, which actually kind of holds up in court, because post fourth great shinobi world war, Orochimaru is not only immortal, but has also basically been able to do whatever they want, and if somebody made the argument of, oh, he hasn't necessarily cracked cloning yet, you can make the counter argument and say that, yeah, well, there original plan wasn't to clone people, it was to master all jutsu. But the Boruto timeline has introduced a wrinkle in Orochimaru's plan of mastering all jutsu. See, because while one has become rather evident that Orochimaru's scope of research has now gone beyond just jutsu and has gone to 
to anatomical practices and trying to recreate Sage Mode and other people, the introduction of people like cyborgs like Ada and Daemon and other clones like Kosh and Koji who are perfect sages or people who are augmented using shinobi wear like Kawaki have all introduced different facets of science that Orochimaru probably didn't even dream possible. And thus in essence, all the technological advancements that Amida was made places them in direct opposition to Orochimaru who probably not only wants to understand the tech that Amato has created, but wants to use their understanding of that tech to make a better version of it. On top of all of that, the continual introduction of more and more Otsutsukis has introduced an entirely new form of Jutsu. Shinjutsu, which apparently all other jutsu come from. And ironically, if Orochimaru wanted to get a better understanding of everything that Amado did while working for Kara, while also getting a better understanding of the Otsutsuki and their Shinjutsu, there is not a better duo you could recruit into your snake cave than Kashin Koji and Boruto. As Kashin Koji was not only cast out by Amado and therefore holds a significant grudge against him, that would very much incentivize him to tell all of the information he knew about Amado to Orochimaru, but also Boruto, who has the cover marking of an Otsutsuki he doesn't want any longer, would be incredibly willing to let one of the greatest scientists on Earth study said cover marking in hopes of one day extracting Momoshiki from him. And the coolest part about this possible explanation is that it would explain why Boruto can't use his cover marking. See, if we assume over the past two or three years, Orochimaru has been doing research on Kashin Koji and Boruto's bodies to crack the code behind both Shinobi wear and karma markings. We can assume that Orochimaru has been doing so, at least in Boruto's case, with the idea of freeing them from that power. As Boruto has already made it incredibly evident in the first 10 chapters of Two Blue Vortex that he doesn't need the karmic power of Momoshiki. But Nick, if Orochimaru is working at the idea of freeing Boruto from the power of Momoshiki, then why does Boruto activate a karma marking in his battle against Kawaki? Really, if you go with this line of thinking, there's only two possible solutions. Either Orochimaru is able to reverse engineer the karma marking and free Boruto from Momoshiki's icy grip, and therefore is able to give Boruto a karma marking free of Momoshiki, like Kawaki has with Ishiki right now, or in actuality, Orochimaru isn't trying to free Boruto from Momoshiki, but rather give Boruto better control of Momoshiki. And the second answer explains a whole lot more than the first one. See, because freeing Boruto of Momoshiki, one, from a narrative and plot perspective, isn't all that great of an idea. Momoshiki still has a role to play in this story, and a big one at that. And two, the idea of Boruto trying to find somebody to help him stabilize his karma marking and coming to the conclusion that the only person who could do that is Orochimaru not only makes sense, but also gives us a clear and definitive reason for Boruto to try and find his way to Orochimaru. But Nick, if Boruto went to Orochimaru trying to stabilize the karma marking, why is it so incredibly unstable right now. Well, we don't actually know if the instability of the karma marking is a new thing. See, well, obviously, yes, Boruto uses his karma marking in, I believe, chapter 79, right before the time skip, as he uses it to absorb the Daikokuten portal that Kawaki's trying to form around him on top of the Hokage's heads. But what we also see in chapter 79 and 80 is the bond between Momoshiki and Boruto growing, allowing them to not only speak inside of Boruto's mind, but also allowing Momoshiki to constantly be screaming at Boruto about how he should be giving in to despair. And it's a possibility after the events of chapter 80 and Boruto not giving in to said despair, that Momoshiki began to rage inside of Boruto's body, truly making the karma marking more volatile than it had ever been prior. And thus, while the karma marking seemed stable heading into the time skip, a lot of key things changed right before the time skip, but mostly became apparent to Momoshiki that Boruto wasn't going to give into despair, which meant that Boruto wasn't going to hand over his body to Momoshiki, which would mean that Momoshiki would need to wrestle it from Boruto. Now, this probably came with a realization to both Momoshiki and Boruto that if Boroshiki ever came out, Momoshiki probably wouldn't let Boruto come back around as Momoshiki now understands that he has to capitalize on any possible chance to take over Boruto's body. So basically what I'm saying here is that Orochimaru's scientific approach to the karma marking eventually allows Boruto to stabilize the karma marking to the point where he can use it in that faded battle against Kawaki. But how? Well, this is why we talked about Kimimaru a little bit earlier. See, for those of you who don't remember, Kimimaru was supposed to be the perfect vessel for Orochimaru, mostly because Kimimaru was the last member of the Kaguya clan, and therefore the last user of the Sakatsumyaku, the bone growing out of your 
skin ability. However, unfortunately for Orochimaru, and possibly fortunately for Kimimaru, even though Kimimaru was like super keen to be Orochimaru's vessel, Kimimaru had a frail body, a degenerative chakra disease that eventually led to his subsequent death. And therefore, Kimimaru couldn't be Orochimaru's vessel, which was terrible news for the both of them. However, an often forgot about aspect of Kimimaru's chakra disease is that Orochimaru's curse mark actually acted as a stabilizing force of sorts. Siwa Kabuto, one of the greatest medical ninjutsu users of all time being around, was definitely good for Kimimaru. Orochimaru's curse mark and its ability to pull in Senjutsu Chakra was also a stabilizing force for Kimimaru. And while using the curse mark at a high level put a strain on Kimimaru's body that eventually led to his subsequent death, it was at this point that the realities of the curse seal was realized. That while the curse seal was technically a way for Orochimaru to place you under their spell, that it could technically be used to stabilize your body. And therefore, I find it to be an actual possibility, especially considering the fact that Boruto was supposed to be a combination of all the best parts of Sasuke, Itachi, and Naruto, that Boruto, in order to stabilize the cover marking and Momoshiki, would not only recruit the help of Orochimaru, but also possibly receive a curse seal. See, because Boruto wouldn't be the only person with a curse seal walking around in Konoha right now. Mitsuki has a curse seal on his liver, I think. Somewhere in Mitsuki's body is a curse seal. And this curse seal is supposed to help Mitsuki in the awakening of sage mode. But here's the thing. While many people assume there was a possibility that Boruto would go on to become a sage like his father, Gosh and Koji's lack of connection to Mount Mubuko would probably prevent that. And while other people have theorized that Boruto would go on to become a snake sage, having two of those in Team 7 is just weird. And thus, it's a possibility that in order to stabilize Boruto's karma marking, he may receive some form of curse seal from Orochimaru, so that he can become a sage much in the same vein as his teacher became a sage. Sage. But I can't say this for certain, as obviously it was established to the person most important to Boruto's teacher that curse seals were bad. But what I can say for relative certain is that if Boruto is in fact in cahoots with Orochimaru, it's a symbiotic relationship, as Boruto allows for Orochimaru to do research on the Otsutsuki and the karma marking, and Boruto gets the fruits of those labors in the form of a more stable karma marking. But Nick, what does any of this have to do with Orochimaru being in Otsutsuki? Well, there's also a theory floating around out there, one that I haven't really been able to substantiate with any actual research quite yet, that Orochimaru's goal of cracking the code of all of the information on Earth comes from the fact that Orochimaru is possibly somehow tied to Shibai, whether it be that somehow Orochimaru was Shibai's duo, or that Orochimaru was kind of like the ghetto statue, the husk of Shibai his body, walking around with enough power to give that body sentience. Now, this theory has been emailed to me, and I've done a lot of thinking on this theory, but no amount of thinking I do on this theory allows me to fill in the thousands of years gap between Orochimaru being a child in Konoha and Orochimaru being somehow tied to Shibai. Now, there is technically a couple of ways you could go with it. You could say, oh, Orochimaru constantly needs to switch bodies, and that's because Orochimaru didn't have complete control over their vessel, kind of like how Ishiki and Jigen weren't a compatible match. You can make the argument that Orochimaru possibly started as a tiny snake and grew into the giant monstrous true form snake that he is today and a lot of other possible explanations but really the problem that you run into is Orochimaru would have had to been alive for thousands of years, and therefore Orochimaru's already kind of cracked the whole idea of immortality. But it would possibly explain why Orochimaru was so singularly focused on gathering all of the information of the human world, and that would be because Orochimaru would want to convey that information back to the other Otsutsuki, to tell the story of how Shinjutsu was watered down into the forms of Ninjutsu, Senjutsu, Genjutsu, and so on and so forth. But even while I can sit here and acknowledge that there's a couple of points that would possibly allow you to get Orochimaru all the way back to Shibai, there's just not enough logic behind it. But I'm curious what you guys think. If we're assuming that Orochimaru is working with Kashin Koji and Boruto, why do you believe that is? Tell me in the comments below and why you guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I can acknowledge the fact that Boruto having a karma marking awakening and then also having cursed seal creep across his face would be terrible character design, but it'd be kind of funny to look at. <laughs>